Yeah. yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that there of course there is okay hello All right alec mile yeah <laughs> of miggle wow i had that wrong in my head for so long um <laughs> alec mile you run the miggle agency you're about to do a jams dev camp presentation about how and why your agency chose Drupal, the transition you went through, the business implications that it's had. And I think it'll be really, really helpful for other people considering adopting Drupal. I really want to thank you up front for taking the time to prepare this and, and present this for us today. I think that I've said enough. If you are for some reason coming in on this video and you haven't heard the podcast conversation that we had, uh, there's a video of that and an audio version of that in all the usual places, YouTube, YouTube iTunes, uh, SoundCloud, et cetera. Check those out. Alec, are you ready to present? I am, I am, I'm ready. Okay, so uh, Alec, Mile, I'm going to give the screen to you. You do the screen sharey thing, and we will talk once you're through. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'm going to talk about how and why we chose Drupal from a business owner's perspective. And, um, and it's a bit of a story of a miggle from, uh, from 2007 to, to now. So miggle are a team of um, 13. We're based in Brighton in England and uh, founded in 2007. We have eight developers, five of whom are Acquia certified. Um, we have a product manager who's also an Acquia certified site builder, a project manager, a qualified QA engineer and account manager. And um, over the years, we've done a variety of web development projects for a, um, for a range of different, different clients. Um, not all of them in Drupal, but in the last four years, um, all of them exclusively in Drupal. And um, for those of you who maybe weren't listening to the podcast earlier, my name's Alec Mile. I'm the MD of Miggle. I've been working in digital since um, 1994. Um, I started off with a range of uh, broadcast and audio and web roles. Uh, spent seven years at Yahoo Europe um, between 99 and 2006, and then set up Miggle in, uh, in, in, in 2007. And um, yeah, if you want to contact me at any point, my um, details are there, are there on the slide. So I always wanted Miggle to be a, um, web development business but first and foremost it was about offering self-sufficiency it was about being able to offer a service that allowed our clients to differentiate themselves and to become self-sufficient in areas that they were unable to resource with headcount in the early days that was more about providing editorial content and content management because that's where the client demand was um, and what you'll see is looking at this slide here that in the first three years of Miggle, over 80% of our revenues um, were, 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 were based around providing um, editorial content, and very little of it was, um, was, was, was based around providing um, uh, web development. Then um, in 2010, we changed our approach to web development and started uh, embracing open source. And from that point forward, you can see that the um, that the ratios between content and development um, start to start to change. And then a year after that, um, we started to use Drupal. And at that point, you know, the, the 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 switch was kind of you know the complete reverse of what it what it had been. You know, we were exclusively um, generating uh, revenues from um, from development work and, and 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 not so much from content at all. And although that's balanced out a little bit in the last couple of years 2012 2013 um we're now at the point where we'd expect going forward to be 80 percent plus in terms of uh in terms of web development so 
how did that happen? How did that um, how did that switch occur? So that's what I'm going to take you through in this in this presentation. So in 2007, when I looked at my first web development project, I said to myself, I'm not going to build a um, CMS. I'm not going to build my own CMS. And I took that decision based on the following thinking. As I saw it, the world didn't need another CMS. It just needed the ones that were there to get better um, somehow. I probably assumed at the time that that was going to happen by increasing market share, um, whether those CMSs were off the shelf or open source. Well, I probably didn't fully appreciate back then that, um, that actually it was the power of open source community that was actually going to drive the um, development of a lot of those a lot of those solutions. Obviously, as established CMSs grew, they were more likely to be able to embrace new new trends um, and would work seamlessly with existing technology. If you're using an existing CMS, it should always be easier to find people who can use that CMS. Um, building your own CMS means reinventing wheels and, you know, there doesn't seem a lot of a uh, point in doing that. And obviously a new, a new CMS, if you write a CMS from scratch, you know, it's likely to have a greater exposure to bugs and probably kind of cover fairly limited use cases. So here's the um, homepage of the first site that I ended up that I ended up building. And in terms of trying to build that site, I started evaluating um, a number of open source solutions. Um, I looked at Joomla and what I liked about Joomla was it had a really brilliant manual, a very extensive manual, but that kind of seemed to expose um, a fairly big weakness was that, you know, Joomla on the one hand seemed to be able to do all of these things really, really well, but then in seemed to be kind of lacking in a number of other areas. And at the time, the most obvious example that I had was that you were fairly limited for kind of content hierarchy. You could only go down to three levels. And I knew the site that I had was going to need to go down to kind of more than um, three levels. And I didn't really feel confident enough in my abilities at the time, given that, you know, I'm a lapsed developer and, and, and more recently had been a product manager by trade. You know, I didn't really feel confident enough in my abilities to actually be able to start to hack Joomla to deliver what I wanted it to do, or even whether that was a good idea. I looked at Drupal 5, um, but I didn't really get much past the install. Um, you know, my first kind of impression when looking at Drupal was I could see like the vanilla homepage, but I just couldn't work out in my head how I get that, you know, to the site that I wanted to, I wanted to build. And I looked at WordPress um, 2.0.6, but I really needed more than a blog, and that seemed to be pretty much all that WordPress could do at that at that stage. So I ended up building a CMS. And actually, even though that wasn't what I wanted to do, I kind of enjoyed doing it because during my time at Yahoo, I'd actually forgotten a lot about what the internet was 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 for. You know, most of my last years at Yahoo were spent arguing about, um, you know, resource and headcount and budgets. So, um, you know, being able to kind of write my own CMS was great. You know, it reminded me a lot of how to code. Um, you know, I learned about my limitations as a coder. You know, building my own CMS made me think about, you know, must-haves and nice-to-haves and, 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 and product roadmaps. And I loved it. I loved it. Um, I loved it too much, um, you know, to the exclusion of, uh, you know, kind of getting dressed and eating. You know, I found myself coding all the time and really neglecting other areas of my business. So obviously I had to resolve that problem. And I, and I did so by hiring a developer and the developer that I hired wasn't particularly interested in, um, you know, reusing other, other code. You know, he wanted to write everything from scratch and, and, and reinvent every whale. Uh, wheel properly and you know very definitely saw Joomla and Drupal as being kind of crutches to support poor developers um, you know which was something that I'd heard you know quite a bit at the time and we found ourselves a client who wanted a proprietary solution so um, you know development of our CMS was funded um, you know which was which was great and um, and we realized that when we were building it it would work quite well for um, for small business websites you know which was a market that we were quite interested in at the time and for businesses that had simple content management needs it was a great solution and we you know very quickly built over 25 sites on it but in reality it um it ground to halt as a solution uh, pretty quickly and the reason why was that Price was often too much of a factor for, for many small businesses. You know, when we tried to pull in small business work, we found that we lost a lot of it on price and that quite often it was a it was a race to the bottom. 
and actually very many of the small businesses that we ended up providing solutions for you know they very rarely manage their 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 content you know so you know we would generally be using the cms to actually kind of get their sites alive and then once it was live they weren't really doing a great deal to to manage the pages and of course if they did they just center aligned it and stuck it all in comic sans um which was always quite depressing um you know they rarely upgraded their sites they rarely purchased other services from us you know so there seemed little reason for us to kind of carry on doing um development and um in a concept that I've stolen from a session that I saw at my first DrupalCon in London in 2011, you know, building your own CMS is, is, is like building sandcastles. It's a lot of fun and you can just keep adding and adding and adding and adding to them, but they're impossible to maintain against the constant tides of change. Um, you know, so new feature requests, um, you know additional clients you know keeping up with bugs you know they're um you know they're 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 they're, they're a difficult thing to to maintain when you have a limited um team to, to 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 do to do so and so around about september 2009 i just said to myself you know this lunacy has to stop and um you know we went back to the drawing board and thought about all of the um all of the things that we've been trying to achieve in the first place when we built a CMS and um, you know going back to my original kind of ideas of you know not wanting to reinvent wheels and so on and so forth and um, and at that point just you know it was it was obvious that we just kind of embrace um, that we embrace open source and uh, the text on this slide here is is copied from um, you know one of our standard um, proposal documents and it talks about how open source is, you know, is as much about freedom as it is about costs, you know, about allowing clients to be free of tie-ins and to be protected from a business continuity perspective. You know, how popular open source solutions are contributed to by thousands of developers, um, creating an environment in which wheels don't need to be invented. You know, clients have limited exposure to bugs. Good open source solutions will quickly embrace the best of new technology as it happens and work seamlessly with existing technology. And also there are great staffing advantages as well. Um, you know, you only if you want to find somebody to work on your solution, it's much easier to find someone who has experience of working on an open source CMS than it is to find someone who can get their heads around something proprietary that um, you know is maybe kind of poorly commented, et cetera, et cetera. So definite advantages, advantages there as well. And um, we always wanted to sell our clients self-sufficiency, you know, right from the start, MIGA was always about providing self-sufficiency. And, um, you know, we didn't want our clients to be dependent on us. You know, they should they should have options. And in truth, we didn't want to be dependent on them either. Um, you know, if if certain work became an obstacle to us growing in a certain direction, you know, we didn't necessarily want to kind of have to unpick client relationships in the same way that we didn't want clients to have to unpick relationships with us just because you know they were tied up with something that was proprietary to our to our business and obviously open source you know really really kind of removes that as a, as a, as a problem so in 2009 we decided we'd focus only on open source solutions and as part of that decision we decided to make our own cms open source that was so that you know we would give our clients the, the the freedom to take the code elsewhere you know if they if they wanted to um you know that we felt that our work was done on the cms but you know someone might want to kind of take it further and then um soon after we did that a uh, a kind of great thing happened and that was really you know that was a final part in our conversion to open source Basically, we had a client who um who ordered a security review on 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 Miggle CMS, and um and as a result of that uh, review, um the engineer found a um a small a small security vulnerability, and um you know I, I saw that as a as a as a, as a really good thing um for, for for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I think that when you run a business often the way in which you kind of build your reputation i think is how you how you um respond to problems you know it's impossible to run a small business without you know kind of running into problems but you know what kind of resonates with client is that is actually how how you deal with them and how and and, and and how you fix them and although we really had no further interest in um you know developing a a, a, a cms 
as the main developers on it, you know, we still felt compelled that we had to we had to provide a fix. So dealing with that in the right way was important. Um, also, the other thing that was good about this hole being found was that it had only ever been discovered because we'd made Miggle CMS open source in the first place. Um, you know, now my development team, you know, they were quite a lot smaller at the time. You know, they were they, they're they're a great team, but they're but they're few in number. And I think it's hard. I'd say almost impossible for a small team to code a fully secure solution. And obviously, opening up our CMS to um you know to the open source community gave us a benefit of having um extra eyes on the code. So this really validated our approach for moving into open source. And of course, the further good news was that no one actually in the end got got hacked anyway. So how and why Drupal? Well, around 2009, when we started reevaluating um, open source sites, open source solutions, I looked at Drupal again, but I was still struggling with how I get from you know the vanilla screen that I see here from a Drupal 6 install to sites that were being built in Drupal 6 around about that time. There's an example of one example of one there. And what I really wanted um, is that I wanted something that was a Lego kit um, that we could build all sorts of solutions in and, um, you know, and didn't at the time kind of appreciate that actually Drupal could be that Lego kit. What had actually happened is that whenever we kind of came across a new site that we needed to build, you know, we were evaluating platforms on a vertical by vertical basis. So, you know, a truck for one solution, a helicopter for another, a boat for another, a plane for another, you know, so we would be trying to find the best kind of product that would fit the, um, you know, fit the job, the job in hand. And um, a good example of this is actually a site that we built for um, Fitness Fitness First. So this was a social front end to Fitness First recruitment platform. Um, it used the stories and experiences of staff in seven markets and languages to describe what made their jobs great. Um, the aim of this being to try and improve the overall quality of people who uh, apply apply for roles. And um, at the time, it seemed like the absolute perfect use case for WordPress. Um, it had lots of blog content and a limited need for content management. But actually, in reality, what happened is that the user journeys and business requirements change very quickly. And, um, you know, the truck that WordPress was uh, needed to become an aeroplane. And in trying to change the truck into an aeroplane, we incurred lots of technical debt, um, which obviously, you know, wasn't ideal you know, and ended up with something a little like this, really, um, which, uh, you know, we had something that was an aeroplane, but essentially it was still, it was still a truck, you know, it was still a, it was still a blogging platform. And um, what ended up pushing us towards Drupal was that in the end, a very decent Drupal opportunity kind of forced, forced our hand. About a year later in 2011, Having known that we were placing lots of editorial staff with large media owners, ITV, who were the UK's largest commercial broadcaster, asked us to do the same for them. But rather than find editorial staff, they wanted us to find Drupal developers. And although we'd not got too far with Drupal in the past, you know, knowing it was based on PHP and MySQL, you know, we thought, well, how hard can that how hard can that be? And actually, it was very, very difficult finding decent staff. Um, you know, so there's some tumbleweed there blowing through a, a, a barren, um, a barren field of, of a lack of talent. You know, when we tried to find decent staff, it was difficult to get them on the terms that we needed them. You know, there were a number of people that didn't want to go and work in a client's office. You know, they preferred to re work remotely, or they, um, you know, they had unrealistic salary demands, or um, you know, didn't necessarily have skills in the right in the right area. You know, didn't want to become full time employees, and so it was it was it was really difficult to find the right people. But actually, we saw that as a as an opportunity before if there's a lack of talent but there's a there's a there's a demand for um for, 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 for people then maybe we should start to, to to focus on it and the other thing that actually kind of helped us with that was that a part of the work that um itv wanted us to do it was about taking on a bunch of sites that were already um already in production and that kind of helped me solve the problem of how i get from you know from a from a site to a vanilla page because obviously 
you know, we were able to kind of reverse engineer that process and see actually how a, you know, a pretty decent fully featured site had been built from the, um, from the, from the, from the ground up. And we came to find that, you know, Drupal was great for a number of reasons. You know, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a framework as much as it was a content management system, um, you know, and it was the Lego kit in which we could build, you know, trucks, helicopters, planes, boats, and, um, and, ev and everything else. It had a lean and efficient core, you know, the flexibility that could be achieved by um, reusing modules, all of which are managed under an open source license. You know, those, those were the building blocks of the Lego kit. You know, that gave us a whole load of power and kind of flexibility. You know, clients only needed to run the code they need. So solutions are often, you know, much less cumbersome than many of the other competitors that, um, that, 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 that we could have used to build sites with. And it had a very visible um, developer community, which was, which was really important. But what I liked about it from a business perspective is that I think if you're running a services business, what you're really trying to do is to work out how you can kind of productize that service business. And, um, and being a product manager by trade, what I really liked about Drupal was that I was I was working with a product. And what I like about products is that products are, are, are boundaried. And if you can understand product boundaries, you can start to use them to your advantage. Um, and what can seem like limiting factors, you know, can often be strengths if you appreciate how versatile those 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 factors those factors can be. Um, you know, and a, if you look at an egg, an egg is a, a good example. You know, you can do a huge amount of things with an egg, but you have to um, appreciate that it is not a sausage. And selling products is um, great for services business because, you know, with products, you can more easily generate qualified leads for products. The market can help set the price for a product and that price can quite easily become transparent. Um, it becomes easier to quote and propose and um, propose against briefs on. Um, you know, I often find myself doing a gap analysis between, you know, what a client is required and, and what is achievable. And it's much easier than to make a trade off between nice to haves and must haves. We often find that when clients come to us, if they've already made a decision to use open source or, or Drupal, is that one of the benefits that they're looking to get is to have, you know, some level of, um, you know, of, of, of business continuity and, 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 and a site that is, is, is future proof. And they realize that the best way to do that is to kind of not incur any kind of technical debt. And we'll often have clients who will say to us that they want us to take a route where we will only look to use contributed modules rather than code anything custom. And if we find ourselves needing to code something custom, that they would encourage us to go back to them to look at where they might be able to kind of make trade offs so that they get all the benefits of using, um, you know, Drupal and an associated contributed modules in as out of the box way as possible. And also, what I also find with proposing, um, you know, for projects using Drupal is that, you know, I get a lot of repeat learnings and that cuts the time that I require from the development team in terms of contributing to um, proposals and in helping to, to close sales, which means that my development team can actually get on with the jobs of um, keeping, keeping clients happy. And also, we managed to build in some business continuity protection with, 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 our, with our resources. As I said earlier, if you're looking for staff, it's much easier to kind of look for staff who can use an open source solution because, um, you know, you're just looking for people with, you know, rel related and relevant experience, you know, and you can just describe the roles and the competencies and the skills and the responsibilities that you're looking for in that, in that job. So, you know, it's, it's actually helped us with, with being able to be much more specific about the kind of people that we want to recruit. And it's also helped us answer the question of what is Miggle and what is our why? And that uniforming vision has helped unify the team and has helped us grow and improve as a, as a business. And that is that we are experts at building content management solutions in Drupal, which deliver operational, operational freedom. Right now, I'm thinking to what extent can I flick the switch from us being an agency that merely responds to demand and one that can be proactive and go and seek out additional work. So I often have seen my role as a 
as the only kind of real business development person within Mickle was um you know as 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 hunting for big deals. It's like it's like hunting for um for for for, for woolly mammoths. Like so I'll go out, I'll club a mammoth, I'll drag it back to the office, we'll live off it for months. And when we get down to the last leg, we'll go out and hunt for another one. In reality though, what I really want to be able to do is I want something more sustainable than hunting mammoths. I actually want to be able to run a farm. And I think that Drupal gives us the opportunity to have a more repeatable way about looking to develop business, you know, which is closer to kind of ongoing subsistence farming and less about hunting when you need. But of course, to run a farm, you need tractors and combine harvesters and barns to store the grain in. And um, those things are really the machinery of your business operation. So, you know, your advertising strategy, you know, your um, social media presence, um, you know, how you generate, how you generate leads, maybe say through cold calling, you know, how you then track all your leads in terms of what you might use for, for a CRM. And then also about how you um, grow your reputation, um, um, which is driven by, driven by word of mouth. So those are the, um, you know, those are the, those are the tractors and the combines and the barns of, um, that you need to kind of run, run a farm. But also, Within Drupal, it's about community contribution and partnership. Contributing back to the product by committing code, um, which alongside things like the Acquia certification program, demonstrates the potential demonstrates the potential decision makers that Drupal is a project that is contributed to by highly skilled and enthusiastic professionals. And thus it can be seen as a really safe choice and that you know, Drupal is a safe pair of hands to develop your develop your project in. You know, speaking at and attending events supporting the Drupal Association, partnering with other specialists that have a requirement for the services you offer. You know, these are all really important things. We're finding more and more that um, prospective clients are actually asking um, suppliers for evidence of um, community community involvement. So the fact that Drupal.org can consolidate all of that information for you on your business page by drawing in the profiles and the, um, and the commits of your uh, of your of your development team is, is 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 a really powerful thing in um in 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 helping to do that, um you know as is supporting the association as is attending and 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 talking at talking at events. And the question that I'm asking myself now for the future is that you know if we can develop this farming analogy further, you know over the last four years the specialism has really been about using using Drupal, you know but maybe there's a chance for us to kind of tighten our focus. So rather than just becoming general farmers, you know, maybe it's about specialising in certain crops and becoming sector specific. So in Miggle, the evolving sector for us has been has been travel recently. You know, maybe there's an opportunity for us to actually start to kind of focus more on the um, on the on, on the travel sector and to drive that with the right partnerships. And, um, you know, with forming relationships with specialists in in in, in, in other areas. So, um, you know, that's that's how I see the, the the future for Miggle going. It's um it's about you know growing our experience in Drupal and maybe being able to kind of consolidate that in in much tighter and um, better product offerings to our to our clients. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for listening to it. Um, if you have questions at any point, you can always send them to me by mail or or, or follow me or DM me on 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 on, on Twitter. I'd be really interested to hear about you know, the experiences you've had in terms of building your business with with open source, either from a supplier perspective or even as an end user or media owner who's looking at actually consolidating um, their development around around open source technology. But no, thank you very much. Alec, great stuff. Thank you so much. My worries. Uh, really, really enjoyed the insights about um, how you – despite you know the, the 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 best intentions how you you actually dipped not, not just your toes but you know probably most of your legs in the in the proprietary waters and the writing it all yourself waters and and the lessons learned from that um, I think that that came across to me when you told me the story the first time that came across to me uh, as a sort of an especially well informed, choice about going with Drupal because you really, really have seen the other side and, um, and some of the, the benefits, but a lot of the disadvantages that you end up that kind of, kind of outweigh that. I really, really like that story. 
So to wrap up, Alec, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us today. No it's my pleasure. This has been a session at my uh, little virtual conference I like to call Jams Dev Camp. Alec Mile from the Miggle Agency. Why don't you repeat us your shameless plug? Oh, yes. So Miggle, we are experts at delivering um, content management solutions and operational freedom in Drupal. <laughs> Terrific. I will include links and resources and all of that stuff if you've been watching this video, there is, and you're somewhere else on the internet, there is a page on Acquia.com that includes a podcast interview that Alec and I did. That interview is also over on iTunes and a bunch of places like that. Uh, session description, links, resources, and Alec's slides will all be embedded on this session page, Jams Dev Camp, um, which you will find at Acquia.com. Alec, thanks once again. It is in real time, the end of July that we're recording this. Go and have a lovely holiday. And then, uh, yeah, I hope to see you somewhere pretty soon. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks again, Alec. All right. Bye. Thanks, Jam.